So in this video, what I want to do is tackle a kind of difficult problem that I think a lot of students um, struggle with when they are trying to understand how to solve absolute value equations. And that is going to be when we have an absolute value sign on the left as well as the right hand side. And to make this equation just a little bit more fun here, I'm even going to add in a number here plus three. So what we need to understand is remember when we're dealing with an absolute value, like just the, like the basic understanding of let's say, you know, the absolute value of, um, I don't know, let's say X, like absolute value of X is going to equal to a five. We know, right, that the absolute value of five is equal to a five. And the absolute value of negative five is also equal to five, right? So we have to make sure we are taking into consideration that X could equal to a five and X could equal to a negative five, right? So we have to include that positive as well as that negative case. So when we're solving absolute value equations, that is exactly what we're doing. We're solving, we're setting the, um, what the argument inside the absolute value to the positive case as well as to the negative case. So you can see in this example, we have both of those cases, right? On the right and as well as on the left-hand side. So what are we to do? Well, the fun part about this, and I think a lot of times where students will see this problem as be kind of being difficult, is we have to include every single case. That means that when this is positive and that's positive. When this is positive, that's negative. When this is negative and that's positive, as well as when this is negative and that is the negative value. So all of those cases we need to consider. So again, let's just kind of write those out there. So therefore we kind of have everything. And then what we can do is once we have all those cases, then we can go ahead and get to solve. And then lastly, we also need to make sure we check for any repetitive or extraneous solutions. We want to make sure that our equations are going to um, satisfy this. So this seems, you know, rather straightforward, but it's actually going to com um, compare like quite a bit of some work. So let's kind of go through our cases that we need to deal with, right? So case number one, is going to be when a 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, and we have a 5 minus x is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, that's going to be both absolute value here. Both those cases are going to be positive. Now, case number two here is going to be when our first argument is going to be 0, and a 5 minus x, though, is going to be a less than 0. Okay, so we have the positive, 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 negative. Then we have case number three here, where a 2x minus 1 is going to be less than 0, and this five minus X here is going to be greater than or equal to zero. And then for number four, we're going to have when they're both negative. So two X minus one is going to be less than zero. And this five minus X is also going to be less than zero, right? So we have to make sure we include that they um, are both going to be on the negative case. Now, again, remember when I am creating something to be negative or less than less than zero, we're just going to negate um, that value. Okay. And so that's basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to take the negative version of that. So let's go ahead and look into case number one. When they're both positive, this is kind of nice, right? So all we're simply going to do is take two X minus one plus three is equal to a five minus X, right? So we're basically, we got everything from there. Now let's just go and use our equations here to go ahead and solve. So I can just add an X to both sides here. I can combine these, right? To give me a positive two. So I get a three X plus two is equal to a five. Subtract to two, three X is equal to a positive three, divide by three, divide by three, X is gonna to equal to a positive one. Okay, so that is going to be one solution that we have here. So let's go and take a look now at case number two. Case number two is going to be the two X minus one is going to be positive, right? So I'll just write that as a two X minus one plus three. So we're not gonna do any changes here. However, now what we're going to do is we're going to negate the five minus X. So when I negate the five minus X, what that's simply gonna do is I'm just gonna say that's going to be a five minus X. So I'm gonna deal with this negative version of this um, second argument, all right? So let's go ahead and combine the negative one and the three, and then let's go ahead and distribute the negative. So I do get, I get a two X, let's see, plus two is equal to a negative five plus an X, okay? So now let's go ahead and subtract the X and I get a three X, let's subtract the two here. So I get a three X is going to equal to I'm sorry, that's an X, not a three X, right? Two X minus one is going to be an X. So X is going to equal to a negative seven. Okay, um, now let's go into number three. So case number three, that was number one. All right, so case number three is going to be, we're going to have the negative version here of our first argument, right? So we're going to negate the two X minus one plus three, and then we're going to deal with the positive argument of the second thing. So it's going to be five minus X, right? The second absolute value is going to be five positive. So that's five minus X. All right, so let's go ahead and distribute here. So I get a negative two X plus one, then plus three is equal to a five minus an X. 
combine my like terms here. Let's see, I get a negative two X, um, and see plus a four equals a five minus X. Now basically just get the variables to the same side. Um, actually, I'm gonna get them to the, let's get them over to the left-hand side here. So let's add a two X to both sides, and then I'll subtract a five. So four minus five is going to be negative one, and that's gonna equal to a negative X. Divide by negative one, divide by negative one, X is gonna equal to a positive one. So you can see that we just have a repeated solution here. So let's go and check out number four, which is now going to be negating both of them, right? So now I'm going to negate the two X minus one. And then I, I'll just write it out there, why not? Sorry, that's a two X minus one plus three, right? And then also we're going to negate the five minus the X. Make sure you're using your parentheses though. See, notice how it looked like a negative five minus X until I put in those parentheses. Be careful, be very, very careful. Okay, so now let's we'll go ahead and distribute and distribute. We already know that's a negative five plus X, but yeah, you know, let's go through the motions. So this is a negative two X. Uh, we actually already did this already as well. Negative two X plus one plus three equals a negative five plus X. Okay, clean it up here a little bit. So negative two X, um, let's see, plus four equals a negative five plus X. And then let's subtract the X, subtract the X subtract the four, subtract the four. Let's say I get a negative three X is going to equal to a negative nine. Divide by negative three, divide by negative three, X is gonna to equal to a positive three. Okay, so now we have three different solutions, right? So we have negative seven, one, one repeated. Um, right, did I have that as a negative five? Oh, negative one. Oh, that's a positive X. I'm sorry about that. That's a positive one. So that's just divided by a positive one. So that actually should have been a negative one. Okay, so now we have one, negative one, negative seven and three, right? So that is our solution set. So we have one, negative one, three and negative seven. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and plug all these in, right? We gotta be able to see which of these actually are going to work here um, for this original equation. Like they satisfy the secondary equations, right? We got that, but we wanna be able to know which ones that, which of them are now going to satisfy this equation, okay? So let's go and do case number one. Case number one was what, positive one? Okay, so I have absolute value of two times one minus one plus three equals to a five minus one. Okay, now I'm just gonna do a little bit of mental math just for the sake of this challenging problem. So two times one minus one is going to be a, um, two times one is two, two minus one is one, absolute value of one is one, one plus three is going to be a four, so four on the left-hand side. Five minus four is four, absolute value of four, so that one checks out. So what about we check out number two, which is going to be what, seven, I believe? Yeah, negative seven, okay? So we have a two times negative seven minus one, plus three is equal to a absolute value of a five minus a negative seven. Again, be very, very careful with these absolute values, okay? So I have a two times negative seven. Um, two times negative seven is a negative 14. Minus one is a negative 15, right? Absolute value of a negative 15 is a positive 15. 15, um, you know, let me actually just make sure I give myself a little bit more space because we have room. That was a four is equal to a four. Check, okay. So here what I have here is a negative two, um, negative two times seven is a negative 14, minus one is a negative 15, absolute value of negative 15 is positive 15, plus three is going to be a positive 18. And then five minus a 12, five, I'm um, sorry, minus a negative seven is going to be a positive 12, right? That does not work. So that is extraneous, okay? So now let's go and take a look at number three. So number three is going to be a two times positive one minus one add inside the absolute value plus three is equal to an absolute value of five minus a positive one. Okay, um, so that's inside the absolute value, right? Let's make these nice big absolute value. Okay, so two times one is going to be two minus one is one. Absolute value of one is one. One plus three is going to be a four. And here I have five minus one is going to be four. So that one checks out. So positive one also works. And then last but not least here, let's check out number four, which is going to be uh, when X equals three. So I have a two times three minus one, that's all inside the absolute value, plus three is equal to an absolute value of five minus a three. 
Okay, so two minus three is going to be six. Minus one is five. Absolute value five is five. Plus three is going to be an eight. And then over here at five minus three, which is two. Well, that doesn't equal to that. So that is also an extraneous solution. So ladies and gentlemen, the only two answers, the only two answers that are going to work are going to be one and negative one. Okay, so that is going to be your answer. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and it was a little bit of a challenge. And if you like this video, then I look forward to seeing you in the next video.